today's presentation, I'm going to talk about simulation of uh, resource scarcity problem with uh, poor source languages uh, using higher source languages. This problem arrives with uh, any translation problems, such as the trust this is a joint work with my PhD advisor, uh, Dr. Jim Zalem, and uh, as well as Dr. Ramesh Sutraman, who helped us with the problem formulation. Thank you. So, for those of you who are less familiar with Crest uh, World Forming Settings, basically, uh, it is. Uh, it contains two components. One is the translation, electrician translation component, and the second is information retrieval, which works should work together. Uh, and basically, uh, the language of your query is different than the language of the retrieval corpus. For example, you have a query in French, and you want to retrieve from the English corpus. Uh, most approaches for CLIR are uh, based on some uh, form of translation tables, which uh, basically maps the vocabulary of your query to the vocabulary of uh, the corpus that you want to retrieve from. It can be uh, normal machine translation, it can be statistical machine translations, or uh, Crossing world more than winning. Uh, such mappings are built from, uh, usually are built from uh, some sort of translation resources. It could be uh, parallel, uh, like sentence level parallel text or uh, comparable documents, uh, basically. But when it comes to lower source languages, uh, we see a dramatic drop in the effectiveness of this translation process. And uh, it basically uh, causes many problems for downstream tasks, such as uh, extraction, summarization, or our uh, main focus of this paper, which is the To get a better sense of how severe this problem is, uh, here is our languages uh, that we study in this paper. Uh, the amount of translation sentences that we have for uh, those four European languages, uh, which are based on Europe data, is uh, 2 million roughly. Uh, this is basically the first uh, publicly available thing that you could easily find, and there are many more data, for example, for French, you can find millions more. Uh, but when it comes to lower source languages, it is extremely hard and expensive to extract uh, parallel data. Uh, here, this is a combination of Lorelei and Material Projects language pack, uh, which uh, barely makes more than 16% of those of higher source languages. Uh, so we are, in this study, we are curious about uh, what problems this uh, limited resource makes. Uh, is this the vocabulary coverage? Is this domain alignment? Or uh, other problems that might be? So, like, one side of always one side of our translation is English here, which we show in E, and for our resources we show in H, and for low we show in L. So, we basically formalize this problem as resource scarcity simulation. Uh, here, uh, we have a lower source trust in global information retrieval setting where you have basically a query. Uh, you have some translational uh, parallel text that you go to your translation model based on that. Uh, and then uh, you have your retrieval corpus that eventually you will retrieve from. So, for example, let's take uh, like an example 
not query formally. I don't know Swan language, so I'm not going to read that. Uh, but uh, idealistically, you need to, like it, 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 it means more amp radio. Uh, and we, we are interested in retrieving that query from the Angeles Times corpus, uh, which is part of today collection. So we are thinking on this problem. Uh, what if we had uh, the same setting uh, with a higher source language? I mean, if we have the same query in French, uh, and basically we have a larger number of translation resources for French, uh, and we can easily translate better that query, and then uh, basically retrieve and in a contrastive framework, see uh, what makes this problem with those source language. So, we basically aim to build a lower source, an artificial lower source, uh, out of this French to English, which looks like uh, very similar to that Somali. Uh, you may ask, why we want to do this? It is because it is very expensive to expand uh, and get more number of translation resources for that lower source language. But uh, when it is higher source, you have available. So if you build an artificial lower source, you can expand and see what's the effect. So we model this simulation problem. We uh, set our problem. Uh, on, on the right side, there is the higher source languages uh, like English sentences, uh, which we have a number of them. Uh, so imagine that uh, the vocabulary of those sentences we assume it is you. And on the other side, uh, for the lower source language, uh, assume the English vocabulary is B. Uh, so basically, like with this down sampling, uh, we are interested in picking sentences that does have some uh, favorable terms, and we want to avoid some terms, sentences that does contain those. So the upper side is basically the terms that we want to have in the down sample, uh, and those are uh, the frequencies that we are interested to have, and below are the terms that uh, we want to avoid, so the frequency, desired frequency is zero. Uh, so the ones that are we are interested to have is basically the intersection vocabulary of higher source English and lower source English. And we formulate this with integer linear programming. These are uh, basically our uh, formulation. Uh, but the takeaway from these formulations is that uh, we prove in the paper that this problem of down sampling is actually a pretty hard problem. So for approximating that, uh, we designed two pretty down sampling solutions. Uh, both of them are based on cost effectiveness, uh, basically price function the definition. Uh, the price here is basically you define for each sentence a cost and effectiveness if it is included in the artificial lower source. Uh, and, uh, Basically, you go each time rank to the sentences and pick them. Uh, these algorithms are uh, very efficient in terms of time complexity. Uh, they run on uh, polynomial time. So here we define our uh, cost function. Basically, cost function by choosing each sentence. The cost function is the number of terms that we try to avoid. And on the other side, effectiveness of the sentence is the number of terms that uh, we are we want to have them. Uh, so here, in order to measure uh, the frequency of those, we define two uh, 
effective construction. Uh, the first one cares about the, the number of desired uh, frequency that we want to have in the done sampled one, and the second only cares if that term exists or not. So we basically, as I explained in previous slides, we do simulate, for example, Somali with one of these that we form, uh, and we define here a sim simulation percentage, uh, which basically like, out of 150 queries, uh, which like how uh, similar are the results to the Somali one. On the first column, you see the original performance of those higher source compared to the lower source, and you see a dramatic drop with Somali language. Uh, but when we run our greedy simulation problem, simulation solutions, you see that it is actually highly feasible to do the simulation, and we have with greedy uh, simulation around 98 percentage of uh, like similar. But an interesting observation here was that uh, it is mm, only one language out of these four European languages who do simulate our lower source language. And it is more interesting when we go to the second language, when uh, we try to simulate Swahili, and uh, basically that same high percentage happens to the Finnish language instead of German on the other. Uh, and like it is extremely, for example, here it's extremely challenging for uh, simulating Swahili with Italian, for example. Uh, it might be given that we are using for European languages European, which are uh, equivalent kind of sentences on the English side. We think that this the reason of this discrepancy is because of language families. Uh, the existing research, uh, which basically is alternative approach to ours, are uh, mostly on the byproduct of the translation instead of uh, basically down sampling the translation resource itself. Uh, so their approach is basically train your translation table and start removing uh, some of the entries from that translation table so that we reach the same auto vocabulary rate. Uh, the good side of this is that it is relatively cheaper approach, but uh, in terms of uh, computations. But on the other side, it is hard to generalize because it depends on the translation model that you train. And, uh, it is not uh, reliant of the translation resource itself. So this is basically our sensitivity analysis on uh, different levels of the vocabulary rate and we measure on each uh, the performance of retrieval for different languages. We only have those two uh, lower source languages on this here, in this plot. So uh, one interesting observation here is that uh, all of those languages, when you play with auto vocabulary rate, uh, they show a consistent behavior, uh, which is which seem, appears to be linear. Uh, and basically, the higher auto vocabulary rate means lower retrieval performance. For example, here uh, we uh, when comparing languages behavior. Uh, each other uh, with fixed auto vocabulary rate, for example 0.1, uh, we see that uh, different retrieval performances happen. This is basically our finding, which was not reported in the <coughs> so, uh, And with the same retrieval performance, we see that, for example, French does uh, have very high auto vocabulary rate. So it is hard to bring French to the level of, uh, for example, uh, what you. Another interesting observation is 
is basically we see a clustering that happens here with different languages, which is uh, kind of connected to our earlier finding on uh, language families connection for this problem. So we see three basically clusters here. Uh, so like two lower source languages uh, are the bottom one and then Finnish is kind of outlier to the other languages and when you look at uh, Finnish's uh, language family it is uh, different compared to others and it is far uh, different compared to English language which might explain this but uh, it definitely needs further so, to conclude our study, uh, it, so there appears to be language families are really important for the simulation problem. And uh, the same auto vocabulary rate in two different languages results in two different retrieval performance. Uh, and it may not predict the retrieval performance across languages. Uh, but uh, on the same language, uh, it appears to be there is a linear relationship between auto vocabulary rate and retrieval performance. Uh, thanks for listening. I'm going to appreciate this student program. This is how the uh, history looks like, and we'd love to hear your feedbacks. <laughs>